Welcome everyone. My name is Ray and I'm a team lead at Encore's Dynamics 365 Business Central practice. In today's video, we'll be reviewing the vendor card, or in short, we'll be creating vendors. The vendor card is commonly known as the vendor master in other systems. This page stores the vendor's detailed information. It also contains important information such as posting groups. The vendor is important as it's the main item as part of the purchasing and payables process. I'll navigate here to the search and we'll look up vendors in our demo company. There's some results here and under vendors list, I'll highlight on vendor and I'll click into vendors. This page shows a complete list of vendors in our demo company. We can also search and filter off of this list. When a vendor is highlighted, there are details in the fact boxes on the right hand side. If we click on the links, it will join to the details. For example, here, if we click on balance, it will show the balance that makes up. To create a new vendor, we will click on the new button here. And it will ask us to select a template. What the template does is it auto populates some of the common fields for the vendors. So instead, I'm just going to click on cancel and I'm just going to bring up one of the existing vendors so we can see the different information, the details that we can fill out. When the vendor card is brought up, there are different tabs that contains different information about the vendor. The first tab is the general tab. It contains the general information. It starts off with number, which is a number series that's assigned to this vendor. When we create a new vendor, depending on the setup, it will auto-populate with the assigned number series and we'll be able to fill out the details. For example, the name and if there's an intercompany partner code or if there's a purchase code here. Minimize this tab and the next tab is address and contact, which is filled with the address and contact information related to this vendor. As you can see here, there's address, address two, there's the city, the zip code, there's also the phone number and email information. We would fill this information out. You can also designate and put in contact information for this vendor. We'll minimize this tab here and we'll go on to the next tab, which is invoicing. The invoicing tab contains tax information. It also contains if, this if the vendor is taxable under this tax liable tab here or button here. Under posting details, it defines the posting groups, which defines how the transactions post to the general ledger. For example here, the vendor posting group is similar to vendor classes. This defines the payables posting account. The general business posting group defines the general ledger account, which is used for purchases. If a vendor uses a different currency, we can select a different currency so it'll automatically default for the transactions. There's a drop down list here. After invoicing, there's the Payments tab. It contains information about how the vendor is paid. You can have a prepayment percentage, how to apply the payments, the payments terms, which is very important here. And we have the payment method code. And we also have the priority, which we can specify for this vendor. We can filter this and sort this when we're, when we're making payments to this vendor. The last tab here is receiving. That's related to the purchasing module. You can specify or default the location code, the shipment methods, and items related to receiving. There's one more area I want to show you. It's the bank detail information. Under related, vendor, and bank accounts here, you can store multiple bank account detailed information for this vendor. In this demo, we have this ECA one. I'm just going to click on this link here to drill down into it. You can see here there's information about the bank branch number and the bank account number. These details are to be used for electronic payments. You'll notice that the information is automatically saved once we finish and tab off of the line. There's no save button in Business Central. With all this information entered, 
We're now ready to create payables transactions, for example, invoices and credit notes to this vendor. This concludes how to create a vendor in Dynamics 365 Business Central. Please contact us if you have any questions.